and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the superhuman Tokyo 2020 Paralympian TV advert and this video is going to particularly focus on media language representation and audiences. This is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying the EDUCAS A-level media studies specification as it is going to appear from 2024 onwards on the specification. At the beginning of the advert we see lots of smoke and we get this dramatic music and low-key lighting and that all adds to this feeling of drama and excitement. The black woman is presented in the centre of the frame and that adds this feeling of importance and power for her. It's at this point that we hear a montage of audio commentary over the top of these shots of the woman um, and that adds this feeling of tension because it feels as though we are at the start of a race or in the middle of a race uh, or a sporting event so it makes it feel like this is very very urgent and important and it adds to that sense of power for the woman in the frame and that's added to with this tracking in shot that goes in quite close to her face and we get the heavy sound of her breathing which adds this sense of drama and urgency to. Yet with all this drama and tension she's got a very cool calm face which shows that she is very cool calm and collected under pressure. She is not made to feel nervous by all of this attention and scrutiny. The gunshot noise acts as a kind of way to transition from these shots in the kind of smoky studio into a kind of more realistic shot of the lady in bed. Um, so we kind of go from the uh, diegetic sound of the gunshot to the diegetic sound of the radio in the bedroom and that adds a sense of realism. The woman is wearing a kind of silk hair cap um, and this is quite conventional for black women at night time to protect their hair um, and it's going to be particularly familiar to audiences who know about taking care of natural black hair. Um, natural black hair is often underrepresented in the media. It tends to be straightened um, or kind of treated chemically a lot. Whereas showing how people actually care for black hair in real life and showing the kind of behind the scenes of the tools of the trade that they have to use, um, it helps to represent things that are typically underrepresented. And it's gonna be something very relatable to a lot of black women. We get a montage here of lots of different people. So we see uh, a female, we see a male, we see somebody in a wheelchair, we see an amputee. So there's a lot of diversity here in terms of gender and disability. Um, and so creating this idea that these um, Paralympians who are taking part in these sports are incredibly diverse themselves. And again, that's going to help people to relate to them too. Again, disabilities are often very underrepresented in the media. We very rarely see people with disabilities in films and on TV and in adverts. And so the inclusion of lots of disabilities within this advert really is going to help to tackle that underrepresentation, but also make disability more visible, more acceptable, um, more normalized. And that could particularly appeal to audiences who have a disability or who know people with disabilities because it's going to make them feel as though they are being represented on the screen when often they aren't. When the advert came out, some people did say as though they felt that some disabilities had been left out of the advert and as though the advert really tends to focus on more obvious disabilities like people who are confined to wheelchairs. And there are obviously a whole range, a very diverse range of disabilities that are covered within the Paralympian sporting community. And so some people might feel as though perhaps the representations could be even more diverse. The strapping up of the joints and the tape, it makes it feel very dramatic and intense as though they're kind of preparing for battle. Um, and the hyperbolic noises here of the strain and the pain that people are going through it, again, it emphasises how heroic and brave they are, but also actually how much pain is involved. So it's not making it seem completely glamorous, this life uh, and the commitments they go through. It's not making it seem as though they don't have problems. Actually showing you a variety of issues they have to deal with, including pain and suffering. We see Ellie Simmons here, who's a swimmer. Uh, the low angle shot makes her seem very, very powerful and dominant within the frame. We get a series of jump cuts uh, that are kind of created here to show different races as though she's taking part in multiple swimming races, swimming competitions and getting different medals. And so it's really emphasising her success. 
This is cross cut here with some army kind of archive style footage. And that kind of helps to emphasize this feeling of, of strength and also of things like patriotism as well. We get here what's called a graphic match cut, the collision of the wheels of the wheelchair along with the collision of the planets. And that again makes it seem as though these kind of sports are very extreme, super powerful um, and, and incredibly strong and dramatic moments. We see a shot here of a man singing happy birthday to a child on a phone. Um, again, this idea of, of talking to your children and trying to juggle being a parent with your job and with being a sports person, this is showing the, the kind of reality of these people's lives. You know, you're not making it seem super glamorous and exciting. This man is clearly separated from his child. Um, the child um, looks a little bit sad that her dad's not there as well. Um, and so it shows how much these people have had to sacrifice and give up in order to uh, be so successful in these sports. Perhaps representing masculinity and, and men in a, a reasonably typical way in that you've got an absent dad, a dad who's not there with his family. Um, although some could argue that the fact that he's ringing and singing happy birthday is quite emotional and representing perhaps men in a more emotional and domestic fashion. Again, there's some more jump cuts here just to emphasise how many different days these athletes train on. And the graphic match cut here of the wheels and the hamster wheel suggests that they are um, exercising and training all day, every day, and it becomes quite monotonous on occasions. The kind of sick bucket here, uh, it adds a bit of comedy um, and it suggests that they have to work until they're ill, you know, that they have to train so hard they end up being sick. So it adds comedy, but it also emphasises just how hard a lot of these Paralympians work. In fact, we see shots of childbirth, so a particular Paralympian giving birth. This idea that, you know, it, first of all, it creates this comparison that, that training for the Paralympics is as bad as childbirth, as painful and as, as stressful and difficult as childbirth. Um, but it also adds this idea that these Paralympians are dealing with normal everyday events. You know, they're not just Paralympians, that they have lives and, and family and they have other jobs and responsibilities and other events going on in their lives that they have to juggle with their commitment to sports as well. So it's kind of representing them as having a really rich uh, life and giving them kind of quite a depth, uh, a deep representation for audiences. The point of view shot of the cycle track it makes the audience feel as though they are there and as though they are taking part in the right race. So it makes us feel very included. We see sparks coming off the bike and the man flying across the screen. And again, this almost feels like an action film. It feels quite dramatic and dangerous. And that's when we see lots of close-up shots of things like bruises and blisters. And, and you know, this has become quite popular, these kind of like um, uh, gory photos or gory imagery. It can be quite engaging for an audience. But again, it emphasises that theme and those narratives that actually this is, these are very dangerous jobs and, and that they have to train so hard that there are actual problems they have to deal with as well. We see a woman in a wheelchair trying to get into a cafe and the step of the cafe prevents her from getting in. So we're as well as seeing these Paralympians being incredibly successful in the world of sports, we're also seeing the very real life struggles that a lot of disabled people are going to be able to relate to. The fact that actually outside of their sports lives, they're still facing a lot of discrimination and difficulties because the world isn't yet set up entirely to be accessible for them. There's some quite surreal imagery here of a black woman kind of running, chasing a, a kind of uh, second symbol. And I suppose it's this idea that um, you know, she's, it's like a dream, it's quite surreal, almost nightmarish, and again it adds a little bit of comedy value, but the surreal nature makes it seem quite engaging as well, as though this woman is dreaming of her sport and dreaming of her success, even when she's not awake, it's, it's flooding her mind. We get similar nightmarish imagery here of Ellie Simmons being weighed down by one of her medals, so clearly showing the pressures that the athletes are under. There's references to illnesses that perhaps a lot of people are going to be able to relate to here, particularly if they have disabilities. So there's references to things like Crohn's disease, taking medication, uh, you know, things being postponed. It's quite relatable. Um, and in particular, I guess, with audiences who've seen it more recently, this advert, 
they may see this as references to things like COVID and things being postponed because of COVID um, and reflecting that context of, of the difficulties, medical difficulties that a lot of people with disabilities have to deal with on a day to day basis. The shot of Boris Johnson is accompanied by some edited words that make it sound as though he said that the athletes might as well quit. And this reflects perhaps Channel 4's more anti-establishment alternative political perspectives. Thousands of balls falling now. Uh, again, it's quite surreal, but it also feels very overwhelming, this idea that there's so many things they have to deal with. The split screen montage of shots here really emphasise the potential injuries and internal damage even that some of these athletes might suffer as a result of their sports. We get a phrase here, to be a Paralympian, there must be something wrong with you, which adds to the comedy value, I suppose, because it acts as a play on words. You know, some people say that disability means there's something wrong with you. Um, and obviously that's quite an outdated view now. But this idea that there must be something wrong with you if you actually want to put yourself through all of these struggles that these people are clearly going through to be at the very top of their sport. We see images here of cheering crowds and that adds to this sense of success and winning. Of course, these representations might help to change people's perceptions of disability. You know, there are a lot of preconceived ideas about people with disabilities and what they can and potentially can't do. And so perhaps this advert might help to show them as strong role models, successful people who can achieve the very top, um, you know, kind of accolades within the sporting world. But also will help to educate audiences potentially on the realities of what it is like to be disabled too. The music on the ad um, might be familiar to audiences from the film Bugsy Malone. It's quite an old film, but it has you know, got quite a cult following and is still shown to a lot of people on TV. So a lot of audiences might be familiar with it. It adds a little bit of comedy value here. Of course, we get the Channel 4 logo here at the end because Channel 4 currently have the rights to show the Paralympics on TV. Um, and then you get the Toyota sponsorship message at the end. And this reflects the fact that it's quite expensive to be able to film and broadcast such a wide range of sports um, across a short period of time. And so the increased costs for this and the fact that Channel 4 is a not-for-profit company means that they do have to find that funding from somewhere. And so uh, taking on sponsorship deals is one way of them doing that. Previously, um, Channel 4 had represented them in different ways. So, for example, one year they had a Meet the Superhumans campaign um, and it very much that year's campaign very much focused on Paralympians being superhuman, being very heroic protagonists who could battle anything um, and, and were very much elevated above reality. Whereas this campaign, they decided to do something different and represent the actual realities of what it is to be a Paralympian. So as well as the successes, they're showing a more diverse and rich representation of disability and Paralympian sports because they're showing the problems, the illnesses, the bruises, the pain, you know, the medications, the discrimination. They're showing a bit of everything. Um, and so this representation seems to be a lot more kind of balanced and realistic than perhaps previous Paralympian campaigns have been. Perhaps this is why Channel 4 decided at the end of the advert to have the words super and human appear on the screen and the ball being thrown towards the screen and smashing the word super so that just the word human is left, emphasising that these athletes are normal. Um, they are um, just like everybody else. And that reflects the fact that they were trying to move away from some of their previous campaigns that some disabled people had felt were um, making disabilities um, seem as though they were too odd or too different and they wanted something that was more normalised. Of course, Channel 4, uh, who commissioned the advert because they are the ones that broadcast the Paralympics, um, they are known for being quite alternative and diverse. It's part of their remit. So um, perhaps that goes some way to explaining why this advert represents disabled people in a more alternative fashion than perhaps more mainstream products tend to do. So that was my easy to understand guide to the Superhuman Tokyo 2020 Paralympic advert. Don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel for other videos that might be relevant for you. And if you do need a video that I don't already have, just drop me a little comment below and I will see what I can do. do.